Welcome to How to Sell Arch Online, a web class that, as the name clearly states, will help you sell your artistic creations online. You might be a visual artist, photographer, or illustrator wanting to put up your own artworks for sale. Or you might be an art gallery or dealer uploading artworks on behalf of a group of artists. The strategies you'll learn here will work in either case. It also works for selling other art objects, such as photo books, t-shirts, catalogs, or pins. Your art product may take a lot of shapes, but the important aspect here is to efficiently define it, market it, and sell it. I'm going to guide you through the steps you should take to start selling your art product on the internet. But you might be asking yourself, who is this guy and what does he know about any of this? How rude. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Stefan van Quick. I live in Berlin and basically I'm an artist, but I also run an art magazine, an art gallery, organize exhibitions, sell art, buy art, coach artists, consult galleries, collaborate with brands, and other art related stuff. I also support creatives into developing their own strategies towards growing their careers. But that's enough about me. This video is not about me. It's about you and developing your own strategies to get your art out there. It's worth mentioning that the goal here is not to aimlessly gather as many followers as possible, but to connect in depth with a selected audience that appreciates the art that you're making. These strategies are based on the quality of your audience and how well you communicate with them. What matters here is the consistency and quality of your communication with your audience. With that in mind, let's jump into this. We'll divide this into three sections, pre-sale, distribution, and post-sales. Obviously, we're gonna start with the foundations. If you want to build an online art empire, the first place to start is at the foundations, to have a stable footing to build upon. In this section, we're gonna cover defining and organizing your art product, how to present your art product, and how to market and distribute it. Even if you have some experience selling art online, it's always worth revisiting your foundations to check if there's anything that might need some adjustments. Keeping it organized at this point also helps your art career run smoothly going further. Define and organize your art product. First off, we should start by defining what you will be selling. Take a hard look at your career and define which works are going to be transformed into art products. This process will vary greatly depending on your personal art practice. A photographer might have to look into selecting the best photos of a series and offer them as limited edition prints while a painter might have to go through piles and piles of original work and deciding upon the best ones. You should also think about branching out into offering different types of art product. That photographer, for example, might group their best photos into a photo book, or that painter could look into their sketches and offer them for sale. This allows you to offer products in different price tiers, so everybody can get a chance to support your art career. This is also a very good point to organize and catalog your body of work. It's very important to have a clear listing of all the works you produced. Take the time to photograph, index, and catalog all your artworks, making a clear database of your artworks. This information will come very handy in creating your inventory and tracking your future sales. Also, while at it, organize and clean up your studio. Since you'll be organizing and photographing all of your art, it's a good time to jump to step two, presenting your art product. Since you'll be showing off your artworks on the internet, it's important to provide the right context to it. Use images, videos, and texts to show your art to people that might never have a chance to see it in person, up until the time where they buy it and it arrives in their home. Investing the time to create quality content to showcase your art is also crucial towards creating the trust needed for people to buy your artwork online. First off, you should photograph your artworks so you can show them off to potential buyers. You won't need any fancy equipment for that at the moment, but 
Invest some time into making these photos look good. First off, you'll need the main photo of your artwork. This is a clear photo that shows only the artwork. No backgrounds, no extra elements, nothing. Then take some extra shots of your artwork where you draw attention to any specific detail, maybe a texture here or the signature. Finally, the most important photo of all is the context shot, where you place your artwork in an appealing environment to give context to it and help the buyer have a clear idea of how the artwork will look like at their own home. Usually, the best way to do this is by photographing the artwork within a nice interior design location, such as the artwork hanging on the wall of a beautifully decorated room with some plants on the side, some books lying around, you know, to give the idea of what that artwork would look like at the buyer's house. If you don't have such a space available, you can always resort to Photoshop and mock-ups to convey the same effect. Then it's time to create the text to pair with those photos. A lot of artists have a real hard time when it comes to writing about their art, but this is a crucial task. Since you won't be personally by your work to talk about it, you'll have to write the answers to any questions the viewer might have. Put in some motivation into this task. Just writing the title of the artwork, the technique and the size is not nearly enough. This is your opportunity to share the story behind the artwork, so don't waste it. Talk about your inspirations, your technique, what were you feeling while you were making, etc. Create a compelling and emotional story behind that artwork. Storytelling is the key between something pretty I saw on the internet and an artwork that I discovered on the internet and will buy. It's about creating an emotional connection with a possible buyer. Finally, you can also use video as an extra tool to connect with your audience. It's a great opportunity to show a little bit behind the scenes of your art practice and a direct link to your daily art adventures. Video is criminally underused by artists as a tool to connect with their audience. Think about recording videos of you explaining your favorite artworks or a guided video visit to your studio a work in progress, or an interview with your previous buyers. The format allows for many ideas. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of innovating into new ways to connect with your audience. Three, market your art product. With your art product defined, organized, and photographed, and written about, time to start defining the ways in which you're gonna market your art product in order to get it in front of the right eyes and as many of the right eyes as possible. There are dozens of ways to get your artwork in front of the right people. And that could be a video on its own. Uh, and I'll probably cover it in a future video. But the good news here is that it's easier than ever. You can use social media or host a podcast. These are very good ways to keep in touch with your existing audience. A good strategy here would be, to, would be to keep them updated towards the news in your art career. The tools and softwares you are going to need for this are usually super easy to learn and free. A good way to reach out to new people could be by getting published in an art magazine or, or blog. You can research for publications that are a good fit for your style and reach up with some examples of your work and a press kit. The important thing, though, when reaching out to blogs and magazines is to not sound spammy. Remember, there's another real person on the other side reading those emails, so try to come across as a real person yourself. If you're looking to expand your professional network, for example, you can reach out to interior designers and architects proposing a collaboration. Or contacting furniture shops could also be a good idea, since they're dealing with an audience that's already looking to improve their interiors. And you know what's a good way to improve your interiors? Art. The main goal here is to set down a strategy using the channels that fit your need and keep it consistent. It's a long-term game. If your plan is to grow your audience by getting featured in as many magazines and blogs as possible, don't get discouraged after a couple of letters of rejections. Keep applying to new publications regularly. The key here is to set up a marketing plan by combining different channels and setting that plan into a schedule and then keeping to that schedule. These are all long-term strategies, so stick to the plan and the results will come. Marketing your art product is the last step of the first section. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about some distribution strategies. Distribution. 
By now, you have a well-defined art product, the right content and a marketing strategy. Now it's time to set up the distribution channels that will connect your audience with your product. Let's go over some distribution channels. The first one would be existing online galleries. There are dozens of websites where artists or galleries can upload their artworks, making them available for sale. This is a good opportunity to tap into an existing network of art lovers who are already accustomed to buying art online. Also, most of these online galleries have a regular newsletter featuring their best artworks. So make sure to contact the marketing department to be sure you get featured on these newsletters. Some platforms are exclusive for galleries while other cater to independent artists. It's a matter of choosing the right fit. There's a list of my favorite platforms on the extra materials PDF that you should have gotten by mail. Print on demand platforms. Print on demand is an excellent option if you want to sell reproductions of your work or if you're offering prints of your photos or illustrations. This strategy allows you to offer your artworks to be printed in a wide array of products and to have the actual product only printed when a collector buys it. After the purchase, the print is produced, packed and shipped directly to the buyer without any hustle to the artworks. This allows you to automate the whole production and shipping of your work so you can focus on making and promoting your art. If you're going to focus on this strategy, it's crucial you set a clear edition number, meaning deciding how many prints of a certain artwork you will offer and stick to that number. This helps increase the value and worth of the artwork. Basically, it's a clear case of supply and demand. There was a lot of tools that will, offer your, that will help you offer your artworks as prints. I'll list them in the additional materials PDF. Sell directly to your audience. You've spent an important part of your art practice establishing and growing your audience space. So why not tap into these connections and set up a platform to sell your art, sell your art directly to the people that are already familiar with you and your art. Your existing audience is already invested in you and already has some emotional connection towards your art. So transforming them into buyers is much easier than convincing a total stranger to buy art from you. This also reflects a common mistake I notice in the art world. Artists and galleries fail to clearly state that their artworks are for sale as they were expecting people to just ask, is this artwork for sale? What is the price? This is an attitude that needs changing. It's important to be able to clearly communicate that the artworks are for sale without sounding salesy or desperate. You should take great pride in the art that you offer. And that should be enough to help you establish your own voice, to communicate with buyers clearly regarding the artworks you make are for sale and how much the cost. It's after all your art, so stand by it. A good place to begin changing that attitude is to build in a shop into your existing website, which you do have a website, right? This is a very clear way to let your audience know that, well, yes, these artworks are for sale. Thanks for asking. It also helps you process payments automatically and brings on one of my favorite things in my art career, receiving unexpected emails that one of your artworks has been sold. The beauty of this is that by having your own online shop, you can sell your work 24 seven, even when you aren't working. With an efficient marketing campaign, the sales come automatically. An additional benefit of running your own uh, online shop is total communication with your An additional benefit of running your own online shop is total communication ownership. When you're selling your works via a third-party gallery, you usually don't have direct communication with the buyer. Usually you only communicate via the platform without any direct contact. But by running your own shop, you can maintain further contact with that buyer, even making them into an art collector by establishing a long-term relationship. There are countless tools out there that allow you to build your own online shop. You just need to do some research into the ones that fit your practice needs. On the extra materials, I'll list some of my favorite tools. These three distribution strategies work better when combined. But every artist or gallery has specific needs 
And the overall strategy will vary greatly from artist to artist. It's important to find the balance that fits your own and unique needs. Post sales. After defining your product, organizing it, setting up your strategies and letting the whole world know that your artworks are currently for sale, it will eventually happen. Consistency and hard work always provide. And if you keep it up, you'll get your first online art sale. Hopefully, the first of many. This final block of the class is about the post sales product. All you will have to take care of after selling your artwork. Here is where you can really over deliver and exceed the buyer's expectations, helping them become repeat buyers or even long term collectors. Packing and shipping. You want to make sure that this part of the process is streamlined and hassle-free for the buyer. If you continue selling art regularly, this part of the equation will become almost automatic. Since with experience, you'll figure out what shipping service fits your need better and how to correctly pack your artworks. But the first couple of times might be a little bit try on error base. So take into consideration a couple of extra days for your first ship outs. The main goal here, as you can imagine, is getting the artwork into your client's house in the first time. For this, it will be come in handy to correctly pack and ship this work. This is obviously one of the most crucial parts of the sales process, but it's often overlooked. Initially, just regular packing and regular shipping should be enough, but some artworks might need special crates or being handled by professional art movers. It's all a matter of knowing your art product. A good rule here is, as in woodworking, measure twice, cut once. Calculate your shipping costs over a couple of different providers to ensure you get the best deal. Cultivating long-term relationships. It took a lot of work to get somebody to fall in love with your art, buy it, and consequently support your art career. That person believed in your art, and we should not take for granted that relationship. Most artists and their biggest collectors establish long-term partnerships, even becoming good friends in the process. So it's important to nurture these relationships with our collectors. Doing so can be as easy as a handwritten thank you note when you ship off your artworks, or an invitation to a studio visit, a special preview of upcoming work, or a unique insight into your day-to-day. -day. Don't ghost your collectors. Write them an email every now and then. As an added value, it's always likely that a happy collector will buy a second work or a third work or a fourth work, who knows. Educate your audience. The art world is, in many ways, still stuck in its old ways, being slow to adapt on online innovations. But beyond our individual role as innovators, we should make a collective effort to educate our audience on how easy it is to buy original art online and how it directly supports an artist or a small gallery. I think that that's the true beauty about the online art scene, where the playing field is level and it's not about your connections or your fancy degree or any insider knowledge into the art world. It's about how good your art is and how good you are at telling its story and connecting with your audience, obviously. So if we all help educate our audience to buying more art and more often, even if it's a smaller and cheaper format, the whole art world benefits from it in the long term. I guess th that's kind of it. The nine steps I use to sell my art online. Below you'll find a link to my book, aptly named How to Sell Art Online. It's an in-depth analysis of these strategies. Also, if you like, you can join our collective, Artists Stop Being Poor. It's a group of artists that teamed up to set their own art gallery, and you can always join it. If you want to learn a little bit more about selling art online and preparing your career for an online stint, be sure to join our Artists Stop Being Poor Bootcamp, where we're gonna meet over the period of six weeks to just turn your art career upside down. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. I'm Stefan McQuick and I'll be seeing all you guys in the internet.